Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Andrea Pop, and I support outreach activities for the National Science Foundation's Policy Office. My pleasure to welcome you today to the Fall 2023 NSF Virtual Grants Conference. I am now pleased to present this session, which will cover NSF's Directorate for Computer and Information Science and Engineering. Hello, everybody. Um, this presentation focuses on the computer and information science and engineering uh, uh, part of NSF. So um, uh, NSF has several directorates. You, you can see them here. Uh, the computer and information sciences and engineering is one of these uh, directorates. This is the overall view of uh, uh, the size of computer engineering, information science and engineering. So this directorate um, has evaluated a, a very large number of uh, proposals. This is just a snapshot for uh, uh, fiscal year 2022. There are over 6,000 proposals, uh, over 1,700 uh, awards made, uh, roughly a funding rate of about 28%. Uh, overall, there are uh, close to 400 institutions supported, um, over 6,600 graduate students and 20,000 uh, individuals uh, from senior researchers to undergrads. Um, out of this, uh, 74 institutions were minority serving institutions, and these um, awards were distributed uh, over uh, 50 states um, and, and two territories. Uh, the mission of our directorate is to uphold its leadership in computing, communications, and information science and engineering, uh, promote understanding the, uh, of the principles and uses of advanced computing, communication, information systems, support advanced cyber infrastructure, and contribute to universal, transparent, and affordable participation in an information-based society. Um, there are several priorities um, that our uh, directorate is um, trying to align. Uh, roughly, um, the size organization uh, uh, it can be is divided in, in four uh, different uh, divisions. Um, from the left, you have Office of Advanced and uh, Cyber Infrastructures, Computing and Info Communication Foundations, Information and Intelligence Systems, and Computer and Network uh, Systems. Uh, you see here the leadership, uh, the size leadership includes uh, Margaret Martonosi, who's the assistant director, and Joy Dipkundu, who's the deputy assistant directors. You also see the division directors and the assistant, uh, the deputy division directors of each uh, uh, division. Um, give you some information about each of these divisions, CCF, supports research and education on the foundations of computing, communication, hardware, software, and emerging technologies, such as quantum information systems and bio-inspired systems. DNA computing, for instance, would be such a bio-inspired system. Um, IIS supports research and education uh, on the interrelated roles of people, computers, and information to advance knowledge of artificial intelligence, data management, um, assistive technologies and human-centered computing. Um, so IS is um, the part that um, does um, the AI, which is very, very um, much at the center of interest uh, today. CNS uh, supports research and education on the fundamental properties of computer systems and networks, cyber physical systems, secure and trustworthy cyberspace and new architecture for future generation computing and communication systems. Uh, OAC supports the design and implementation and operation of research cyber infrastructure, uh, which is essential for um, advancing research and education in uh, science and engineering. Um, the outline of the talk, I want to give you a brief overview, then we're going to describe a couple of selected programs and then some closing thoughts. So again, these are just going to be a couple of selected programs. Um, we recommend everybody uh, who's interested in um, uh, our director to just uh, consult our web pages. There's a lot more information and a comprehensive list of, of programs that we support. Um, the core research investments in size, um, essentially we um, spend about a third or more of the budget uh, on these core research uh, um, areas. 
So essentially, the idea here is to cast a very broad net and let the PIs, the principal investigators, the scientists, come up with the best ideas, um, go through our very thorough um, merit review process and identify those ideas and pro, uh, provide funding for, for uh, the best uh, uh, projects uh, proposed. Uh, we also uh, have a significant concerted effort to engage with our community to develop new research directions. So we are very receptive to new ideas that can come from the community. So the core programs in the four divisions um, are as follows. In IIS, uh, we have human-centered computing, information integration and informatics, and robust intelligence. Uh, in CCF, Computer and Communication Foundations, we have algorithmic foundations, communication information foundations, software and hardware foundations, and emerging technologies. In computer and network systems, we have computer and networks, of course, and also education and workforce development. And finally, in advanced cyber infrastructure, we have um, OAC core research. Um, this is a fundamental um, aspect for anybody interested in obtaining funding from NSF. The very first question that uh, one should ask is, what is the best part um, of NSF um, to uh, address my, uh, uh, to direct my proposal to. And uh, we recommend strongly that you um, look at our web pages um, and uh, see it, consult the detailed description, descriptions of these programs, try to identify the best um, uh, program that fits to your ideas for your particular proposal and contact the program directors in that particular division and uh, ask for feedback. And uh, we are very happy to help you identify which of these uh, programs, which of these divisions would be the best um, suited to the type of research that you are doing. Um, the core programs, uh, essentially, um, they are divided into various types of pro uh, projects. There are small projects. Um, see here to the right um, the characteristics of those uh, small projects. Uh, the budget is limited to 600,000, the duration up to three years. And uh, this can be submitted to CCF, CNS, and IS uh, only. Uh, medium projects, there are from $600,000 to 1.2 million. The duration is up to four years. And this, again, can go to CCF, CNS, and IS only. Finally, the OAC core projects, they go from 600K um, up, uh, duration up to three years, and um, uh, as mentioned, these are specific to OAC. The deadlines are outlined here to the, to the left. Essentially, the small projects are can be submitted anytime, uh, which is very convenient because uh, that means that there is no uh, pressure um, to um, submit to a sp specific deadline, and hopefully that allows people to ensure that the quality of their uh, proposal is, is maximized. For the other programs, for the mediums, uh, you see here October 1st, October 23rd, um, 2023, uh, that passed already, but that is the same period every year. The same for the medium projects, October 1st, October 23rd, and for OAC um, um, as well. Eligibility. So the proposals may be submitted by essentially institutions of higher education and non-for-profit, uh, non-academic organizations. And you have some examples here. If in doubt about the eligibility of your institution, the best um, thing is to just contact a program director and, and verify that eligibility. In terms of uh, the personnel, the PI uh, is expected to be a tenure or tenure track uh, faculty um, or a primary full-time um, researcher in a, either a research or teaching position at, at one of these uh, institutions of higher education and uh, non-for-profit. There are um, certain nuances here. Um, for instance, uh, it could be a, 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 an overseas branch of a U.S. Institute of high, uh, institution of higher education, and uh, but that um, part that that institution that overseas branch would not be eligible, right? So um, again, if in doubt, please contact any of us, and we'll be happy to help. 
The program description uh, can be found on our website. Um, each uh, division uh, within our directorate has um, a very thorough description of the topics that we are interested in and specific solicitations that cover those, uh, those topics. The large projects, um, uh, essentially there are uh, pro uh, projects that are expected to uh, involve several size disciplines um, that can only be addressed by larger teams. Uh, with combined contribution from different uh, from different aspects, and the expectation here is that the uh, combined contribution would be larger than the sum of individual contributions. So there has to be some some synergy there. So if you take four different projects that are not related in any way, you cannot just put them together and and say let's just submit a large uh, uh, proposal. They have to make sense and they have to provide a certain uh, synergy. Uh, where um, each part contribute, uh, contributes to the project, but also benefits from the contribution of the other parts. Uh, there, the funding here is larger. The anticipated funding amount is about $20 million. Um, the estimated number of awards is about four. And also the description of the project is uh, allowed to be a little bit longer. It can go up to 20 pages. Uh, also, an essential part of a large proposal is the management and coordination plan. Um, this plan has to um, describe the specific roles of the PIs, co-PIs, and other uh, senior personnel. Uh, the plan has to describe how the project will be managed within organizations or across uh, the, the various teams. Uh, it has to include met methods, measures, and metrics um, as to how the team will keep an eye on the project um, uh, development, on the progress of the, the particular uh, project. In other words, how these uh, technical milestones are going to be monitored, measured, evaluated, and so on. And um, again, it's very important to identify the mechanism that will be used to coordinate between the, the, the projects. Again, being a large, uh, a large project involving different people, potentially from different institutions, um, uh, it, the coordination is uh, uh, super important. This will also include a post-award site visit in which NSF would like to see exactly uh, what, uh, how the award, um, was uh, um, undertaken and uh, some of the results um, that are uh, obtained from that uh, particular uh, funding. Uh, one very important aspect for the NSF is the broadening participation in computing. Um, it is a, a well accepted fact that um, certain um, groups and populations are underrepresented. Um, in this area, and um, such groups may include women, African Americans, Hispanics and Latinos, American Indians, um, Alaska Natives, Native Hawaiians, and other Pacific Islanders, and so on, persons with disability, and so on. So NSF has a, a sustained interest in making sure that the participation of such groups is um, expanded. So um, all core research programs uh, we require uh, some activities in this area. So a BPC, the Broadening Participation Computing, a BPC plan has to be included um, in uh, uh, each proposal. Um, and that plan has to be in place at the time of, of the award. So it doesn't need to be in place at the time of the submission of the proposal, but before the award is, is made, this has to be um, uh, in place. <clears throat> Another initiative is the research and research practitioner partnership. So this, the idea here is um, NSF would like to foster a partnership between educators, researchers, and computer scientists in order to build community and sustain research-based efforts. So this uh, type of um, funding will support evidence, the creation and utilization of evidence-based instructional materials, uh, curricula, activities, assessments, and so on. Um, so for this one, the uh, proposal deadline is second Wednesday in February every year. <clears throat> Another program uh, provides support for uh, graduate um, students. These are uh, 
computer information science and engineering graduate fellowships. And uh, you have here some uh, numbers in 2021, for instance, um, there were 34 such uh, fellows. In 2022, 68 such fellows, and you see the, the split across various um, demographics. Uh, the hope is that we will continue to fund uh, uh, around the same number of fellows every year, so somewhere around 70 fellows every year. The CRII program, it's a very uh, interesting initiative. Uh, here, um, this is a mechanism that aims to provide uh, the research independence and some funding uh, for very young uh, researchers that are at the very beginning of their career, okay? So uh, the requirement is that the PI holds a primary appointment um, where in, a, in an organization that would allow them to be PIs for uh, science programs. Uh, but this would be um, a non-research uh, one institution. So those would be institutions where maybe the environment is less uh, favorable, less, less supportive. So um, by providing funding to um, uh, these people, um, NSF uh, ho uh, hopes that these people will be able to uh, maybe buy out some teaching and use the resources um, that the institutions may not have for them to actually allow them to uh, start a research program and, and uh, be competitive in this area. So the requirement is the person has to be at an R1 institution, um, be uh, before tenure. So um, once you, they get tenure, they are not eligible anymore. Uh, be in the first three years of a tenure track or research science or education position or equivalent. And at the submission deadline, the PI may not have received any other grants uh, as a PI. So they could be a co-PI with somebody else, but um, the idea is to support people who are at the beginning of their career and they have not um, uh, managed to, uh, to get a, a grant on their own. Uh, the funding is uh, limited to $175,000 for two years. Another very uh, popular program is the career program. Uh, this is faculty early career development. Um, this is the most prestigious award um, that is made in support of junior faculty. Um, the idea is to uh, uh, help people and encourage them to um, become at the same time good researchers, but also good educators. So to um, you know, combine their research uh, with, with uh, uh, a level of excellence in, in the education activity that they, they provide. Um, so this uh, program was uh, started in 1996. Overall, until now, over 200 programs have reviewed career proposals. Over 70,000 uh, people were um, awarded such careers. Uh, the PIs are allowed only one submission per competition. So that means one submission per year and uh, three attempts. Um, so the idea is that um, you can submit once, get some feedback uh, from the reviewers, maybe if, if the uh, proposal was not um, uh, awarded, and then use that feedback to uh, improve your proposal and submit the following year. We strongly encourage you, if you are in that situation, to also uh, contact the program directors and try to get some feedback because they can provide more um, uh, detailed and more nuanced feedback about um, uh, the ideas and the discussion that took place uh, during the review of that particular grant. There is also a career proposal writing workshop, which is made to, meant to help people understand uh, what the criteria are, what the expectations are, uh, what a good career proposal looks like, and so on and so forth. This is uh, offered every spring. The proposal deadline for the career program is in July uh, every year. So it says here July 2023, but it's uh, July every year. Okay. So uh, NSF organizes um, uh, proposal writing workshops, uh, also aspiring PI meetings, 
and early career work workshops. Um, in addition to the specifically uh, career-oriented one that I'm, I just mentioned. So again, the idea is to help people understand what the expectations are and how to write a good proposal and how to get funded and, and get support for their research. Anybody interested, we strongly encourage you to um, look on our website and contact some relevant program directors for more information. <clears throat> a particularly interesting program is Expedition in Computing. Uh, this is a, something that uh, the National Science Foundation uh, started more than um, a decade ago. Uh, the idea is to <clears throat> uh, encourage investigators to come together within or across departments and combine their talents uh, and, and come up with something that can be really transformative um, and that would look ahead by at least a decade. A decade. And uh, the idea is to allow them to envisage and then um, uh, undertake research that can uh, bring disruptive innovation in computer information sciences um, that can change you know, the future. Uh, the level of funding is about $15 million uh, for seven years. And these um, expeditions represent some of the largest single investments currently made by, uh, by our directorate. Um, so this is uh, something that again, uh, is going to, the expectation is going to involve several people, uh, PIs, several PIs from various, um, disciplines that would work together in order to uh, come up with something really transformative that will have the, the potential to change the world as we know it. Uh, here is an example. This is uh, the flight of the robo bees. The idea here is to uh, construct uh, some flying robots that are modeled after the uh, bee. And you see here a timeline that started in 2009 um, starting with the uh, manufacturing technology and then uh, a first um, uh, flight that was controlled uh, by a tethered uh, um, insect robot. Uh, then eventually uh, it um, evolved in various ways, the ability to purge to save energy, the ability to move from one environment to another different environment. Uh, then finally losing the tether, being able to fly autonomously, um, and uh, eventually, uh, this, uh, this project led to um, uh, this uh, manufacturing method being uh, deployed to launch a sur surgical robotic uh, startup. Another uh, uh, program that may be of interest to you is this uh, robotics at NSF. Um, Again, best, best source of information is the website, also, also the uh, you know, most up-to-date in terms of deadlines and uh, everything else. Another category of um, uh, support is um, uh, offered by the RAPID uh, grants. Uh, so these are meant to be uh, a funding mechanism uh, for uh, those situations in which there is a uh, a, a severe uh, and urgent need for progress in one particular area uh, or dealing with one particular uh, uh, problem. Uh, so examples could be um, natural disasters, uh, pandemics, uh, COVID-19 was uh, um, something that uh, triggered a lot of uh, uh, the submission of a lot of proposals uh, for this mechanism and, and the subsequent awards made in this area. So here the project description is very different, is brief, is two to five pages, but it has to explain why this particular uh, uh, research is suitable for this uh, uh, type of funding, for this mechanism. In other words, why the proposed research is urgent and why a rapid uh, proposal would be the best mechanism. This would be reviewed internally, and the uh, amount of money is in, and the turnaround is very, very quick. The requests um, are maybe for up to $200,000 and one year duration, right? So this would provide that um, nimble mechanism that can provide funding on a very, very rapid basis um, to, to address something that is happening almost in real time. 
so cyber physical systems essentially these are uh, engineer systems that are built from and depend upon the seamless integration of computation and physical element okay so we have some uh, uh, computer science some software there but also have uh, a physical uh, physical components physical aspects to it so the cyber physical system <laughs> aims to develop uh, the program in this area aims to develop the core system science that is needed to engineer, uh, manage, and further develop these complex cyber physical uh, systems. There are several key national priority sector areas and includes uh, um, a TTP, a transition to practice option. This is a cross directorate and cross agency solicitation. So um, funding can be obtained for for this kind of research from different agencies, including NSF, SAIS, but also um, DOT, NIH, USDA, and, and others. Um, again, this um, can be submitted, uh, proposals for this type of funding can be submitted using the small and medium um, mechanism that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the, there is also a larger um, opportunity, these uh, frontier proposals that uh, are um, due in June every year. And examples include transportation, energy, healthcare, critical infrastructure, and so on. Uh, you can imagine this as being at the center of, uh, of many, many areas that can overlap sometimes um, more than two or three. So um, you see some examples here from aeronautics, medical, agri agriculture, manufacturing, um, energy, uh, civil materials, and so on. A very important aspect in, uh, in the current environment is the safety, in particular, the safety of anything that is related to artificial intelligence. So there is a, this is a, a new solicitations. You have the URL at the bottom, uh, safe learning enabled systems. So essentially the question is, okay, we are developing this system that are able to learn and kind of mimic or exhibit some form of intelligence, these artificial intelligence systems. How do we make sure that these systems are, are, are safe? And in particular, how do we make sure that they are safe uh, when facing unknown unknowns. So um, things that can happen in the future and nobody can um, have an idea right now. So about what the nature of that particular um, unknown or um, uh, let's say perturbation or, uh, or, or attack. So the question uh, here is how do you build a system that are sufficiently robust to extreme events? Um, and how do you monitor them for to detect any, anything that is anomalous or unsafe. So some of these uh, very, very important questions um, can be addressed with uh, uh, proposals and awards in, in this particular area. The secure and trustworthy cyberspace, <clears throat> I think is pretty uh, self-explanatory. The idea is to um, make sure that this um, cyberspace that uh, we are spending more and more time and. Uh, that becomes crucial in many areas of the society. How do we make sure that this is secure and, and trustworthy? And this is, again, something that um, can be addressed by um, uh, funding coming from various uh, directors here, and size is, is one of them. <laughs> These are some examples. Uh, showing you some, some of the uh, classical areas of research that uh, would fall in this. So the foundations would include hardware, software, uh, formal methods, cryptography, um, networks, uh, math, stats, algorithms, and so on. The applications can be many, you know, cloud is, is a big one nowadays. Medical is more and more important. Healthcare is, uh, is a very, very big scale problem. Mobile, uh, social networks, uh, internet of things, and so on. And this, uh, on the last level, uh, there are many aspects um, from biometrics, data science, uh, social and behavioral sciences, privacy, ethics, uh, human computer interaction, and so on. So that's the interface with, with us, with the humans. 
the mid mid scale research infrastructure uh <clears throat> there are two here the mid scale research infrastructure one and two uh, so essentially, this is cyber infrastructure that addresses a community or, and or national scale computation and, and data intensive uh, science and engineering research. So these are very large uh, awards uh, for R1, uh, the range goes from 4 million to 20 million, for R2 goes from 20 million to 100 million. <clears throat> A very important um, and timely initiative is this uh, National AI Institute. So the idea here is to provide some sustained investments in area that have a potential for a long-term uh, payoff, uh, to focus in particular on societal challenges and enhancing our national competitiveness in AI. Uh, there is some emphasis on convergent foundational and use inspired research. So, um, and again, this is something where um, essentially each um, proposal um, is expected to create a research institute that involves a number of different entities, not only universities, but also federal agencies, um, private industry, non-for-profits and so on. So it's supposed to be like a, a mini network, um, usually is, um, regional, but it doesn't need to be regional, um, that provides um, <clears throat> the milieu in which people can uh, do really cutting edge research that is related to AI. Uh, this is the, <clears throat> the history. So, so far, um, NSF has funded 25 such institutes that uh, span over 100 funded organization. There are over uh, 680 senior personnel involving in this type of institutes, um, 480 partners um, to uh, some of these institutes. Uh, the funding came from 21 different divisions within the NSF and involved over 50 NSF program officers. So overall, you can, you can see this is something that is really very broad and, and really very, very important. <clears throat> um, the idea is that, uh, as I mentioned, each AI Institute is going to provide um, a network of people, it's going to create a network of people who are going to be addressing various problems related to AI in a certain area. Uh, but there is all, it also is very important to connect these AI Institutes um, so that um, people do not work in, in, in a silo here, another silo there, but rather communicate so that important problems are addressed uh, from various perspectives by various people, various uh, interdisciplinary teams. <clears throat> so uh, in, along with this uh, vision, um, you have some uh, funded partnerships and uh, virtual organizations and programs. So again, the general idea is to create a network of networks um, that would effectively connect scientists, uh, allowing them to address these problems. Sometimes these are uh, also um, involving our international partners. And uh, you, you, uh, you see some of the countries that uh, collaborate with um, NSF, various organizations from those uh, uh, countries uh, collaborate with NSF in this area. So um, the idea is to increase the capacity uh, in terms of research productivity, and that can be done uh, by building the capacity in the first place um, with certain specific goals, institutional support, and, and so on, uh, and then uh, create these partnerships um, by providing sub awards. So each institute will provide sub awards to um, various um, uh, collaborators and partners uh, that belong to that particular um, institute. And also, uh, it's important to uh, create and uh, update the policies that are related to the research in this area and the use of, of AI. <laughs> Um, NSF has um, two mechanisms for um, sharing with the community the um, research directions and topics that uh, 
NSF is interested to fund those are solicitations and uh, these dear colleague uh, uh, letters. And this is one such uh, uh, DCL, dear colleague letter. And uh, this is about the international collaboration supplements in um, national AI research institutes. So this is um, an invitation for people to submit requests for supplementary funding for, uh, from the awardees uh, of these AI research institutes to add uh, a, a dimension, an international dimension that can be uh, new or if it's pre-existing, it could strengthen that dimension. So there are 16 countries engaged in, uh, in this. This is a collaboration with uh, OISE, about $3 million. There are 14 proposals and that led to six NSF awards and four uh, NIFA awards. Uh, we have other partnerships. This is uh, the one with uh, Australia, um, the organization within Australia is the Australian Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization. Um, essentially, there are four, there were 43 applications, um, and uh, the first round of awards were was around were announced in 2023. There is another international uh, initiative that will be awarded uh, uh, shortly probably around February 2024 as well. So uh, this is a snapshot of the uh, portfolio of programs in uh, uh, size. Um, I mentioned some of them, but this is a, um, trying to put them together in a, in a single slide. Um, there are others, uh, as I mentioned, the best way is to um, um, consult the, the website. There are also partnerships with other stakeholders. Um, essentially, the objectives are to deepen and grow the research and innovation, uh, to make available the research infrastructure, and to develop the work, uh, workforce of the future. And you see these partnerships can be at the local level, um, could be foundations, could be industry, could be international agencies or other federal agencies. Overall, this is a great opportunity to be involved in research in anything that is related to uh, uh, science, uh, computer and information science and engineering. Um, computing is everywhere. Um, computing uh, intertwines with many communities. So uh, geographically, vertically, and horizontally in the society, computings are everywhere. And computing is expanding rapidly and evolving. So there's a tremendous opportunity to have some really um, important impact in this area. And we are looking forward to uh, answering your questions and uh, uh, receiving your proposals. Thank you so much. All right. Um, welcome back, everyone. Um, Soren, if you want to come on camera so we can um, answer some of these questions that came in. All Hello. right. <laughs> good, good. All right. So I will start. Um, if I am look if I am looking for creating novel smart health device not addressed before that will utilize AI for detecting and monitoring the patient, do I need to target NIH or NSF cy cyber physical space? That, yeah, thank you for uh, for the question. That's a great question, and I want to make it more general. So sometimes people work at the interface between two different areas. In this case, the question about uh, is whether you should go to NIH or the NSF, right? But even within NSF, one can work at the interface between different areas. And the question is always, should I go to this one or should I go to this one? So the rule of thumb is um, that I recommend to the PIs that uh, contact me is think about who's going to benef benefit first and foremost from that type of research. Um, let's say, let's say in this in this example, um, if the the main beneficiaries are part of one community, go to the program that um, uh, focuses on, on the research in that particular community. Uh, for instance, um, let's say that you work at the interface between um, uh, life science and computer science, right? So um, if you, let's say you want to do a, um, uh, build a, a, a database that would uh, have some publicly available data, analyze it in some novel ways, and uh, and provide the result in um, some uh, web accessible tool. 
if the main contribution of that research is going to be the tool, then the beneficiaries are going to be the life scientists. So you would go to the bio or let's say the NIH um, part. If the main beneficiary, if you, your research is going to focus on developing new algorithms um, and new methods um, and, and new infrastructure, so computer science stuff, then the main beneficiaries are going to be in the computer, computer science community and you should go to that, um, to that uh, particular uh, um, you know, opportunity. And the best way when in doubt, write a one page summary and send it to the potential uh, program directors in, in those particular areas and they'll be very happy to go over it and provide some feedback. Sometimes we can do that by email. Uh, other times we can set up a time and um, have a quick Zoom meeting and we can discuss, um, maybe ask more details and then we can provide the, uh, the appropriate guidance. Okay, great. Um, so the next question I see, and um, I do encourage folks to um, enter in your questions in the Q&A, um, but we, we have a question asking, um, do you have any examples of successful grant projects funded by IIS or size in which the PI did not have a PhD? Uh, I do not have an encyclopedic knowledge about. Okay, got <laughs> the, it, got it. Okay, the thousands <laughs> of awards that size, but I can I can give a, a an, an answer to a maybe related question. Um, I, I was once on a um, review panel and uh, the, the PI uh, had a background that was completely different from, <laughs> from what the research was. And actually, in fact, the, uh, he is, yeah, so the, the PI did not have a PhD at all. And uh, uh, in fact, they had a background in music and the research was all science, hardcore science, you know, um, you know and you would think that that, that was necessary. So, the, the reviewers are actually um, invited to consider the um, uh, qualifications of the PI and of the team and take that into consideration when they um, um, provide the recommendation uh, in the panel uh, in the summary, right? And as long as the PI um, has a, a good um, track record that shows they have the experience, the knowledge and the capability to uh, potentially um, lead that uh, project successfully. I don't think there is a requirement. Some, some solicitation may have, specific, may have specific requirements, but I don't think there is a general requirement for, for a PhD. So, but always check the specific solicitations that you are uh, responding to and contact the program director, the Cognizant program director uh, for that particular opportunity. All right. Um, and then the next question is asking, are international collaborations also encouraged and accepted outside of the AI initiative? Um, yes. So there are uh, two types of, um, at least two types of um, opportunities here. So there are some opportunities that are aiming specifically at international collaborations. There is something, there's a solicitation, there was last year, there, is a there was a solicitation for global centers. And um, last year, there was a certain focus. Um, this year, um, or, or there are other opportunities with various uh, specific um, uh, topics. But so in general, those are opportunities. You have to um, look them up. Um, and there are specific opportunities in specific research areas that involve uh, international partners. Um, and sometimes the, the partners are limited to a certain number of countries that are you know, included in the solicitations. There, are, there is also another um, type of international uh, collaboration. Um, and that uh, is in those situations in, in which the research that is envisaged and proposed can take uh, place only in those parts of the world, right? So if you want to study the um, ecosystem in, I don't know, in an African desert, then it would be really useful to have a, a local uh, collaborator because the, all, that type of research has to be done in that particular part of um, the world, right? So in those situations in which the research that is envisaged um, requires that the research takes place in a particular location which is not in the US, then uh, um, an international collaboration is 
um, well justified. All right. Um, few, a few questions about international collaborations, it looks like. So, um, so this next question um, is regarding the graduate fellowship. Um, and can international students submit to this opportunity? Um, so is there a specific opportunity that the question is referring to? Um, I it, no, um, but if this uh, anonymous attendee would like to add um, what they are referencing, then maybe we can revisit that. So I'll give them a minute um, and I can just I can move on to the next question so, uh, in principle. So in principle, the way this works. So if there is um, an international student that is interested to do graduate work in the US, they would um, contact a certain um, principal investigator, certain scientist that works at an academic institution in the US, they will get admitted in that graduate program. And then the, the PI can obtain NSF funding that to support that particular person. So um, the funding is most of the time uh, uh, obtained by the PI for a certain project. I'm not familiar with the details of a specific solicitation for, for graduate fellowships. You can you can always email me and I can um, I can provide some some details after the meeting via email. All right. Um, and then does size also support eager grants for robotics and CPS based research? Are there any guidelines one must adhere to while submitting the same? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Eager sure. for robotics and CPS? Yes. So does size support eager grants for robotics yes. and CPS based research? Yes, so so the eager is a mechanism that is um, um, is the same for the same for the entire directorate, right? So yes, um, so essentially you would um, you know you you so, uh, you submit a, a proposal that um, uh, meets the requirement of the eager program. So the eager, as I mentioned, is is uh, internally reviewed and so on. It's um, but the first thing to do before that, you, you for eager in particular. You have to contact the program director with a short description of what you want to do. And the program director has to um, encourage the submission of, uh, of an eager proposal. Okay. So that's a, but there is no, I don't see any reason for which a particular area would not be allowed. So yes, the answer would be yes. Um, and then the next question is uh, Does the PI have to be a US citizen? Um, or a visa holder will be eligible to apply if he, she is a faculty member at a US college? Yes, yeah, so generally um, you, uh, one needs to be um, eligible. So um, uh, I don't think US citizen, in most opportunities, there are always different opportunities with different requirements. I cannot stress this, this more. So the, uh, there are no general, general requirement uh, answers that can be applied universally. I'm sure there are some, some specific opportunities that uh, in which that may not be. But in general, um, most opportunities require only that the person is employed at the, um, in a in a position that is eligible, right? So normally, a faculty at a U.S.-based institution would be eligible for uh, to be a PI, even if they are not yet a U.S. citizen. If they are a green card holder or H-1B-1, there are many many visa status. I don't think the visa status is. Um, is um, is an issue. There are those specific opportunities in which one um, must have a U.S. citizenship, but those are, I think, a minority. All right. Um, and then we do have a question from um, somebody um, saying, uh, I guess their institution is is not a minority serving institution, but it's located in an underserved region. Um, and just wondering if this is something that could be related to diversity when submitting a proposal. Yes, absolutely. So NSF has two sets of uh, two major criteria. One is intellectual merit. The other one is broader impact. Uh, um, and broader impacts include um, uh, involving underrepresented um, uh, categories uh, of, of the population. So definitely pretty much in any proposal whatsoever, uh, if one includes some activities that would include uh, increase the uh, broader broader participation in computing or reach out and involve 
um, underserved, uh, uh, underserved categories, um, th those are always things that uh, will make a proposal stronger. All right, um, and then still a couple more questions, but um, we do still have a few minutes. So if people have more questions, just um, feel free to enter those in the Q&A. Um, but this next question, um, uh, are there any NSF programs that accept co-PI who is not from the US? Um, or is there any NSF programs that support um, joint collaborations between US and Canada? Yes. So, for instance, the global program that I mentioned uh, before um, is a partnership, and one of the Canada was one of the the partners uh, last year. So, the this year, um, I am not sure if the solicitation has been officially released, but uh, last year Canada was one of the partners, and um, as such, the, um, uh, the the solicitation was looking for proposals. Um, that involve collaboration between US and Canada. And the way it was uh, designed to, to, have, to, uh, to take place was there is a common project and there is a PI in the US, uh, taking these, these three, two countries as an example, there's a PI in the US, there's a PI in Canada. And uh, um, the, the uh, proposal is, um, uh, the, the merit is assessed as one project However, uh, if uh, recommending for funding and if awarded, the US is going to fund the PI in the US and uh, the Canada is going to fund the, the PI in Canada. So that's one example. Um, there are others as well. And, and yes, uh, uh, I, as I mentioned, for instance, if there is some research that involves um, something that uh, has to take place or has to leverage resources uh, that are unique or you know would be much easier in a certain country then a copy from that country would be justified right. including Canada great okay um couple more questions um so this one is um NSF used to have an interdisciplinary program creative IT um in the past that merged arts and sciences and that program was discontinued um, any plans to restate the program or any other creative interdisciplinary program supporting synergy between arts and science in the future? Yes, I am not, oh, I'm not aware, but I'm not in a position to be aware. So the fact that I'm not aware of such plans doesn't mean they are not, they do not exist. So uh, basically my recommendation would be to, uh, uh, reach out to the program directors that were um, responsible for that program at that time. Those would be the best people who would would be able to tell you um, whether there are any equivalent solicitations or follow-up solicitations or anything that would be in that particular area. That would be my recommendation. I'm not one of those people. Okay. <laughs> We all want to be those people. Um, all right. So the next question is, um, my university office of research does not have a guideline on how to find community and industrial partnerships. Uh, could you provide a recommendation regarding best practices to establish partnerships with community partners? Well, um, science is always the, the best channel. So uh, essentially, if you have some, you are doing research in a certain area, um, I think my recommendation would be to uh, go and identify who's going to benefit uh, from this research if uh, if this research is um, is successful. Um, and in particular, there are two ways to go about doing research. One is to say, oh, uh, this is what I've done in my previous work, and I would like to continue this expanding in, in this particular direction. This is one one way. Um, and the, the other way is to try to find a problem in the real world and then deploy any, you know, deploy one's knowledge and any tool and method available um, anywhere uh, in order to solve that problem. I strongly recommend the latter. So um, one way to find partners is to um, look at, uh, for instance, there are all sorts of um, uh, venues through which companies express interest in certain areas. Um, sometimes they they are looking for even proposals um, uh, from, from people in um, academia uh, to solve specific problems. 
So if you think that what you are doing um, uh, can contribute to the solution of you know progress in that particular area, contact the, the, um, that particular company through the channel, with the contact information that they provide there, and, uh, and, and say, hey, I, I'm working in this area. I think I can help here. Uh, would you be interested to partner in some way? Um, so that, that would be the best, uh, the best way. Uh, other opportunities, of course, any meeting, any conference, um, any publications that is related, that has a co-author from, from industry, um, one can contact that particular co-author um, and say, you know, I read your paper about such and such. I'm working in this area. I think I can help. Um, let's let's uh, have a conversation. Let's have a Zoom meeting uh, and, and explore this uh, um, this potential, you know, partnership. So those are some 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 ideas. Okay. Um, so we are almost to the end. I have one more question. Um, so let's see. So uh, NS, uh, solicitation NSF 23-524 um, indicates that the total funding amount is 20 million. Um, anticipated number of awards is four, and there are three submission dates in 2023, 2024, and 2026. Um, so will there be a total of four awards from 2023 to 2026, or is the 20 million for each fiscal year? Um, so the solicitation, I'm looking at the solicitation right now, says estimating number of awards for anticipated funding amounts, 20 million, and okay, normally I would interpret that, I can see your, your uh, where the where the question is coming from because the submission dates are in one part of the solicitation and this information is in a different part. Um, the way I would interpret is that there are going to be four awards from um, from this solicitation. Um, probably, um, oh, this is going to be oh, this is a large so this every year. So the way I read this is going to be four awards expected every year. So not um, 20 million over three years, but uh, uh, 20 million every year. Again, there is a, a list of program directors at the end. Best thing is to uh, um, send an email to one of those people. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, we do hope to see you for the last day of our conference tomorrow. Um, presentations start at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, thank you very much and have a great rest of your day.